Hey, good morning everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. This is gonna be a super special episode because we are gonna take you step by step through the construction of a pondless waterfall. When I say step by step, it's from tagging the stone to total product material, how we estimate it out to the finished plugging it in, which is gonna be the best. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So I am sitting here at the one and only Illinois Brick where we get 99.9% .9 of our stone from and I'm about to start tagging boulders. And this particular job needs about five, six tons of boulders, which is gonna be somewhere around five pallets. Five pallets at a ton and a half puts me a little closer to eight tons, but I'm gonna tag five pallets mainly because I want the selection. We always, always on every job we do, tag a little bit of extra stone because when I'm out there, I don't know the exact placement of every single boulder. So let me take you through kind of what I'm looking for for this two-step, three-step waterfall that we're gonna do in a front yard and the boulders we're gonna be using. Here we go. So you can see Illinois Brick has a huge, huge selection of stone. In fact, I just tagged a bunch of this stuff over here with the green paint on it for a job we'll be doing sometime next week. You can see some of this stuff in here and I love this moss rock stuff, but the project we're gonna be using is gonna be using weathered limestone, which is a lot of this stuff here and some of this stuff over here. I see this big boy here and I kind of want to tag it just because look at it. Who wouldn't want that rock? But that is a very, very special placement. Who knows where that would go? I don't know, maybe a sign for a front yard or something. <laughs> I have no idea, but I kind of want it. Problem with using a big, big rock like that in a landscape, you would need some other big rocks around it to help it scale down, or you're trying to make a statement all by itself. The project we're going to be doing is only about a two and a half, three foot high waterfall. Got an existing slope in the front yard, and that's every bit of a seven foot boulder right there. So a little out of scale. The ones I'm looking at are some of these guys here. First, I wanna look at how a rock like this is gonna sit. This would not be the top. This would be the top over here. So this would be the bottom. You can actually see when they harvest this out of the ground, here's probably where it sat in the soil. They pulled it out. In fact, here's the soil. And then you can see the mossy part is the top. So this rock would actually sit more like that. And that's a perfect rock. I love the high part here. I love the low part there. The top's got a lot of moss on it. The other side has a bunch of moss on it. A lot different looking from this side than it is from this side. But I think this is a good palette. I also like the size of these. So this is about a two and a half foot boulder. We've got about an 18 inch boulder there. And so we're gonna go ahead and mark this one because I know I can use some of this stuff. So we've got one see what else we got here. This is a great palette, not because there's anything fancy going on with any of these rocks, but these are nice little filler rocks, some 18 to 24 inch type stuff. I know I'll probably use these as like wing walls off to the left and the right of my waterfall. So here's the two. Let's see what else we got. I like the two on the bottom. I'm not a big fan of this guy. And it's a little big probably for the project we're gonna be doing. So not a huge fan of that palette. This rock just is throwing me off. It's just way too white. Now these rocks over here, kind of white, but look at this one here. Again, I'm gonna looking at the rock and how I would actually use this on a job site. I actually love how thin it is. See, that's only about 12 inches thin. This would be the bottom, this flat part down here. This would end up being the top. And when I can take a rock like that and actually stand it up, I can get a lot of height without the girth that I'm looking for. I look at this rock here, this would be the bottom. That would be the top over in there. Could even be a waterfall stone. The other one we've got in here, kind of similar, very thin and tall. So this is a guaranteed yes. I got three pallets down. I need two more to go. This rock's gorgeous. Again, a little out of scale with the size waterfall, but can you picture this rock with that guy and then another big one behind it? Oh, that would be awesome. This is a nice pallet. Let's see what else they got. This we can save maybe for later. This is all weathered limestone ledge rock. You can see how everything's flat and kind of layered and we don't have the space to do that. Those are great for like longer meandering streams, but hard for a quick incline on a waterfall. One, two, three, kind of nice, but just big cubes. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I do like this palette. Again, just some medium chunks in there. That's a gorgeous rock on top. The stuff down below, a little weird, oh, but kind of cool. That could 
be a cool waterfall stone. See how wide it is? I could really spread that water out quite a bit on that. Frame rock, frame rock. Actually, this whole pallet could almost build a waterfall. So let's go number four, and then we need one more, right? That's a nice one there. Yep, that's our number five. And so now all I do is I give Joel from Illinois Brick a call. I say I've got five weathered limestone pallets tagged for the Downers Grove job, which goes next Monday. And then I've got 15 tagged in green, which goes for the job for next Tuesday. Obviously Tuesday's job is gonna be a little, a little bit bigger. All right, guys, next time you see me, these rocks are gonna be being unloaded for a job out in Downers Grove. So you're gonna see what we get to do with all these guys and how pretty they're gonna look once we place them in there. See you in Downers Grove, bye. I told you last, next time I'd see you guys would be out here in Downers Grove. Here's Illinois Brick, right on time. There's our man Moose, right? right. The only driver that we ever want. <laughs> Here's all that stone, if you guys can remember, tagging some of these big boulders. So he's got not just the boulders on there, but some of our gravel over here. And then the rest of our team is out here just getting ready to protect this entire driveway. We have some fabric we're gonna put down, and then over the top of the fabric, we're gonna take our plywood and cover this whole thing so that machine can drive up right up in here and this is the area we're working in now check this out is this not going to add some crazy curb appeal or what so we've got a decent grade change to work with we can get up just about as high as the bottom of that two by four that's holding up that veneer in there we're going to start a waterfall about where this rock is first thing we're going to have to do is pluck these boulders out of here then come in and we can't get too close to the edge here there's no way we want to drive anywhere close to this soldier course because that'll move for sure so we've got to either build this up so we don't put any pressure going this way and then drive in and then pluck those guys out we got to pluck out some stumps it looks like and then we'll start placing those beauties so everything in the morning is pretty busy now with this project we've got a series of different materials we got six aqua box going in which gives us about a little less than 120 gallons it'll be a 120 gallon reservoir when we're all finished just because of the depth we're gonna set it at we have a two inch pipe we have a poundless vault we have a 22 inch spillway. We've got a 15 by 25 liner. And we've got some lights, check valves, and all that kind of stuff. So that's the bit sheet I like to use for all of my projects when estimating these things out. It just gives me a, kind of a shopping list, if you will, when working with the customer. Now we're gonna take all of that stuff and put it over in this spot. It should look incredible when we're all done. All right, you can see we got the whole area prepped. So we got all of those big outcroppings out of there, which are these big boys sitting here. Considerably larger than you would have guessed them to be. More than 70% of some of these rocks were buried down into the ground, just making them huge. So the next thing we're gonna do is start kind of laying out where the aqua blocks go and get that reservoir in. After we get the reservoir in, then we get to move up to the waterfall. And already we've run into a little obstacle. I have no idea what this copper line is right here, but we're gonna find out here pretty soon. You guys can tell we got our whole excavated for our reservoir. Brian, again, has been saying six aqua blocks, but um, ultimately it was eight aqua blocks. So please feel free in the comments, tell him that he was wrong. Cause I know he would love to hear that from me, especially coming from me. So we're just coming in here. We're just having a lot of fun out today. It's it's Monday. It's a little overcast, a little chilly out here, but we're having a fun time out here. It's snowing right now. <laughs> it was snowing earlier, yes. But yeah, we have our whole excavator. We're just fine tuning the corners and everything. We're getting our fabric liner fabric in and then our aqua blocks in. Backfill back behind our aqua blocks. And then we're going to set our first so Jack and Chris are working on getting the liner in, then we're going to go around and pull all of the corners tight, get all those folds out of it, just makes the liner lay in there nice and neat, allows us to get the aqua box in there nice and level as well. Easier uh, working conditions to make everything run smoothly. And then we're going to cover everything with another 15 by 15 fabric, and then start getting our aqua box and our vault installed. So 
so as you can see, we have our eight aqua blocks in, so we did two rows of four. So Excellent. hopefully you guys can hear me. It's a little windy out today, but yeah, we're cruising right along. It is currently, I'm gonna say 10.30, 11.02, a little off. But we're doing really good progress for today. Jack's gonna cut our last aqua block so we can fit it in front of our vault here. Is so that what we so like to do, actually make eight blocks? All right, are you done talking? <laughs> are, you, are you done? What do you say, Z? Obviously, I'm wrong. But as I was saying, we cut our aqua blocks in this area to fit this void, and that way it's structural in front of this that, the vault, and that way it gives us a, a true rectangle in this area, and there's no protrusions into the aqua blocks, and that way there's not gonna be any weird folds or anything like that. We like to keep this thing nice and secure and, and square. That way all the compression keeps these aqua blocks nice and strong and sturdy for this reservoir so to last. So Jack's cutting that right now, and we're gonna pop that thing in here. Look at, look at how good this cut is. Skills. That's what you call a true professional right there. Darn right. <laughs> so as I was saying, we're getting our reservoir in. Jack, Dan Lee cut our aqua block to fit in this corner here, and that way it gives us a nice structural void space, and um, it creates a nice rectangle in this basin so that way we can backfill. Nice and easy, it's a nice flat edge, and we're not gonna risk a pile of rock in there and it being a bunch of protrusions into the side of the edge of the basin. So we're gonna fold this stuff back, throw some dirt back behind her, make sure it's all nice and tight, compact it, and then we're gonna start setting rock. Hey guys. Hey guys. Jack, Jack and Jack here. here, gonna come to you with some cool pun tips. No, just kidding. <laughs> Pondless tips. Get it right, it's a pond less, all right? I love when you get to correct me back, it's so much fun. Good, good. That's a nice <laughs> All right, so we got our basin in, 100% done. We just gotta start setting rock now. So we're gonna start slinging some rock over here. It's a little before lunchtime. So yeah, we're gonna go pick some rock out, see which ones we wanna bring over for a waterfall, and then we'll be rocking and rolling. 